Right in the middle of this entire crisis, when the levels of combat and violence have been increasing, the destruction is huge, global tensions are at an all-time high, this is what President Putin has basically tested. It's called the Sarmat. It's one of Russia's most capable and highly anticipated nuclear long-range missiles. It's a ballistic intercontinental range missile. But why has he done it now? when it has all the potency to ratchet up nuclear temperatures and tensions once again. What is the signal going out? Take a look at this report. On 20th April, Russia test launched its intercontinental ballistic missile, Sarmat, believed to be adding more power to its nuclear arsenal. U.S. Congressional Research Service claimed that Russia is expected to deploy Sarmat with 10 or more warheads on each missile. Dear comrades, I congratulate you on the successful test firing of the Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile. This is a big significant event in the development of advanced weapon systems for the Russian army. The new system has the highest tactical and technical characteristics and is able to overcome all the missile defense capabilities. The heavy intercontinental ballistic missile Sarmat has been under development for years now. Its test launch at this crucial juncture of war is an ominous sign and the Russian president is well aware of it. It will have no equivalents in the world for a long time. This truly unique weapon will enhance the military potential of our armed forces and will reliably provide security for Russia from external threats and will make others who, in the heat of frantic, aggressive rhetoric, try to threaten our country, think twice. The intercontinental ballistic missile was test launched from Plesetsk in northwest Russia and hit targets in the Kamchatka Peninsula in the Far East. Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, let's tell you a little bit about the Sarmat, which is the newest missile that President Putin's forces have just tested. It's an intercontinental range ballistic missile, which means ranges in excess of eight, 9,000 kilometers. It has a range of about uh, 11, uh, over 11,000 kilometers and has a weight of about 308 tons. Huge, huge missile. This huge missile has just been tested. It's an intercontinental range ballistic missile. It's a three-stage liquid-fueled ballistic missile. And remember, it adds to the current arsenal of intercontinental range ballistic missiles that Russia already has. It is about 35.3 meters long, 3 meters in diameter. That's pretty much what the Sarmat missile that has been tested uh, actually looks like at this point. It can carry more than 10 warheads. It is said to be technically superior to any intercontinental nuclear missile uh, you know, that has been there. It has faced some delays. It's been in development since the 2000s. Uh, this test was expected, but for it to happen at this point of time is what has raised a lot of nuclear eyebrows all around the world. And most importantly, while testing this missile, the Kremlin has said this is not only our most technologically advanced nuclear weapon, it's also something that will give our enemies food for thought. So dangerous, provocative language being used along with a test of a weapon system at a time when tensions are at an all-time high. A great deal of messaging taken place. But remember, is nuclear war possible or is it too far-fetched? One of the world's most respected Russia watchers, a Harvard professor named Dr. Rab Ra Ra Ravi Abdelal, has spoken exclusively to India today's Rahul Kaval, and he had this very ominous prediction to make. Tactical nuclear strike is a possibility. Words that will echo through war rooms across the world. Not just random analysis, but the words of one of the world's most respected Russia watchers. Engage with the world. Howard Professor Ravi Abdelal, director of Davis Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies. 
an academic whose views on the world's biggest story is one of the most sought after. It is not about Russia versus Ukraine, but about Russia versus the West. And for that logic, we need to think about what are the ways in which Russia and NATO could come into direct conflict that could lead to a nuclear exchange between the great powers as opposed to a single tactical nuclear strike in Ukraine. Professor Abdullah's world exclusive interaction with India today adds ominous urgency to the aura of nuclear threat surrounding Russia and Ukraine. His words come just a day after Russia's foreign minister in his only interview so far in the war played down the nuclear threat that has emanated consistently from Moscow. The Russian military has these hypersonic missiles which are good at evading missile defense systems. It has thermobaric weapons, these so-called vacuum bombs. As far as we know from the outside, the Russian military has used one of each, probably to demonstrate what they can do, but have not yet escalated to the widespread use of these really terrifying weapons, much less the possibility of a tactical nuclear strike on the territory of Ukraine. There could be no winners in a nuclear war, and therefore, nuclear war must never be launched. Obviously, the Professor Abdullah is the second top-tier American academic to highlight the nuclear threat emerging from Russia. Last month, Princeton University's Dr. Zia Mir echoed the fear. This is part of the script of the nuclear age. So nuclear weapon states say this because they can, because they have nuclear weapons. Away from the nuclear threat, Professor Abdelal also sees Ukraine's current weapon levels as only enough to keep its head above water. The Ukrainian military and indeed the Ukrainian civilians who have been waging this counteroffensive against the Russians have perhaps been armed enough to achieve a kind of stalemate though not enough to win the war. More ominously, the Harvard professor predicts the longer the stalemate, the more destructive things could get, with newer weapons entering the combat mix. But the longer the stalemate lasts, the more likely there will be escalation on the Russian side, using weapons that they have mostly not yet used in ways that will be difficult for the rest of us to watch and horrible for the Ukrainians to endure. With only some indicators on where the war is headed and what the end game is, the Harvard guru makes a pronouncement that provides shape to the next steps. That there's little chance of the war winding down soon. President Putin has gambled his historical legacy on this war, which means that there is no backing down. There will be no end to this war until the Russian president feels that he can narrate some sort of achievement, both militarily and politically, from the war. On India today, the most sought-after academic and strategic minds provide their views first, allowing us and you, the viewer, navigate this emerging conflict. With Rahul Kawal in Boston, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, after back-to-back -back nuclear dares from Russia, a kind of rollback saying nuclear war is off the table, and now this sudden testing of the most capable Russian nuclear missile amidst the highest levels of tension in Ukraine. Here's a report telling you why the world is actually not very sure about what comes next and why it has reason to be worried. An unending invasion war. Weeks of savage battle. Countless deaths, cities in complete ruins. But no massive wind to show on the ground, 
for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Amidst the fierce fight back by Ukraine and biting Western sanctions, ominous signs for the world have emerged. Putin has resorted to the Brahmastra in his arsenal, the massive Russian stockpile of nuclear weapons, openly threatening a no-holds-barred nuclear war, refusing to rule out the use of nuclear weapons if there is an existential threat to Russia. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had earlier warned that any Third World War would be nuclear and destructive. A threat repeated by the Kremlin with chilling resonance. The outcome of the operation, uh, of course, is not a reason for usage of a nuclear weapon. We have a security concept that very clearly states that only uh, when, when there is a threat for existence of, of the state in our country, we can uh, use and we will actually use nuclear weapons to eliminate the threat for the existence of our country. Let me assure you, a responsible member of the international community committed to its obligations to non-profilation of weapons of mass destruction. Russia is taking every possible measure to prevent Ukraine from getting nuclear weapons and respective technologies. The nuclear saber rattling is one of many that Russia has openly indulged in. Just days into the Ukraine invasion, Vladimir Putin had put nuclear deterrent forces on high alert as a chilling warning to NATO and the West. Dear colleagues, as you can see, not only Western countries take unfriendly measures against our country. In the economic dimension, I mean the illegal sanctions that everyone knows about very well. But the top officials of leading NATO countries allow themselves to make aggressive statements with regard to our country. That is why I ordered Defence Minister and Chief of General Staff to put Russian Army deterrence forces on high alert. It has now emerged that Russia had even dispatched its nuclear ballistic missile submarines into the North Atlantic as the war raged in Ukraine. After their deterrent patrol, the submarines were quietly pulled back by the Kremlin. The West fears that Russia, suffering massive reverses in Ukraine's war theatre, could resort to using tactical nuclear weapons, which are of a small yield but can devastate an entire city. In a bid to escalate the war and force Ukraine to agree to its terms on the negotiations table. Allies agreed to supply equipment uh, to help Ukraine protect against uh, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats. Uh, this could include um, uh, detection uh, equipment, uh, protection and medical support, as well as training uh, for the uh, contamination and crisis management. We are also enhancing allies' uh, preparedness and readiness for chemical and biological and nuclear threats. A calculated nuclear gambit or plain brinkmanship to turn the tide in a war that has simply not gone Russia's way as expected. Whatever it may be, the Ukraine war triggering nuclear moves comes as a massive alarm bell for the entire world. Most analysts believe that Russia's saber-rattling with nuclear weapons is precisely that. It's muscle flexing, it's signaling, it's posturing, and nobody really means to actually use nuclear weapons. But the fact is that the nuclear weapons available in the world today are more than enough to destroy the only planet we have. And Russia is currently sitting on the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons of any country in the world. Take a look at how many nuclear weapons there are in the world who has them, how they can deliver them, and what that impact would be. Debris, devastation, damage. The Ukraine war, an image of the brute power 
of modern militaries. But nothing comes close to the kind of doom that would become real if the threats being thrown about by the powers at play come to life. With Putin putting the world on nuclear notice by placing his strategic arsenal on war alert, you may be wondering about the strength of the world's nuclear weapons arsenal. You may not know this, but Vladimir Putin currently controls the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons. Russia during this crisis has made not one, not two, but three nuclear threats. They've even operationalized and put on high alert their nuclear arsenal. Here's a look at the number of nuclear warheads that each country is known to have just now because it's all about the numbers. Russia is the country with the largest nuclear arsenal with over 6,200 nuclear warheads at this point of time. The United States has just a few, uh, somewhat fewer warheads, no less powerful at 5,550. And then there's China, which has 350 nuclear weapons at this time. For comparison, the only two NATO countries, other two NATO countries in Europe that have nuclear weapons are, of course, France, which has 290. You've got UK, which has 225. Pakistan has 164. Remember, in the nuclear world, these numbers are enough to destroy the world many times over. India has 156 nuclear weapons. Israel has about 90. North Korea, we think, has between 40 and 50 nuclear weapons. Each of the nuclear powers also have formidable delivery systems to deliver their weapons of mass destruction. Starting with the most secretive and stealthy platforms, nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, some of which Russia had sailed into the North Atlantic at the beginning of this invasion of Ukraine. So starting with the Russian nuclear ballistic missile submarines, like we said, is the Bore class of submarine. Uh, there are 10 that are supposed to be in service and their main weapon is the Bulava intercontinental submarine launched ballistic missile. The Bore class is the mainstay. Moving on to the United States, they have a fleet of 14 Ohio class SSBMs or ballistic missile nuclear powered submarines. The Trident ICBM is the primary nuclear weapon on those submarines. Then you've got China which has a fleet of six Jin class uh, uh, nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines uh, which have the Julang 2 missile which is their major primary deterrent weapon. Moving on to France, it has the Triumphant class, uh, a fleet of four such submarines, nuclear ballistic missile submarines uh, where uh, they've got their own weapon system on board those as well. Those also go out on strategic deterrent patrols. Moving on to India, of course, we've got two Arihant class uh, nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines, the Agni series of missiles and their derivatives, the K-15 and the K-4 missiles are our nuclear capable submarine launched missiles on that particular submarine. And finally, the United Kingdom has the Vanguard class, a fleet of four nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines where the US built Trident missiles are the primary nuclear weapon on board those submarines. So many, many nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines already in the world. Nuclear powers also have land-launched ballistic missiles designed for intercontinental range nuclear delivery. Russia depends on its arsenal of Topol M long-range ballistic missiles designed for nuclear strike out to ranges of 11,000 kilometers. The US has Minuteman III ballistic missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads out to 13,000 kilometers. China's Dongfeng series of ballistic missiles have large ranges to deliver nuclear warheads, including the Dongfeng 31, capable of nuclear strike out to over 11,000 kilometers. And remember, the land leg of India's own nuclear command has the Agni 5 missile capable of carrying out a nuclear attack out to 5,500 kilometers or more. All of these long-range missile systems are operational and ready to be deployed at short notice. And in response to Russia's nuclear signaling, are in fact on reciprocal high alert. And apart from land and sea, there's always the aerial option for nuclear bombing, very much like the first and only nuclear attack 
over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. The aerial option exists to this day with nuclear powers. Russia, which has been using the Kinjal air-launched ballistic missile in Ukraine, has been fitting them with non-nuclear warheads. But the missile is capable of nuclear strike as well and is part of Russia's strategic arsenal with the missile deployable from MiG-31 fighters as well as Tu-22 bombers. The United States' nuclear air delivery platforms include the world's first stealth bomber, the B-2 Spirit, an enigmatic airplane capable of penetrating highly contested airspace for strategic bombing, and the monster B-52 Stratofortress, an eight-engine behemoth that's seen half a century of nuclear readiness. What we're telling you is that the world has enough nuclear weapons and delivery systems to doom us into non-existence in a flash of a second. Weapons that were developed during the Second World War and then proliferated as a method to keep the post-war peace. While they haven't stopped wars and destruction, they've certainly ensured there hasn't been another nuclear exchange after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But with the world's biggest powers turning up the nuclear heat, it's only natural that the world is on edge. Bureau Report, India Today. One of the biggest military events in the war so far in Ukraine is Ukraine's claimed sinking of the Russian Navy's Black Sea flagship, the huge missile cruiser warship the Moskva. But even that event has a nuclear angle and it has actually ended up fueling even more nuclear concerns because Ukraine says this ship was actually carrying two nuclear warheads and has asked for an international investigation into whether that's actually true. Take a look. The threat of Moscow using nukes in the raging Russia-Ukraine war has just got bigger. Experts say there could be two nuclear warheads on board the sunken Russian warship Moskva. Experts say the number could be higher as Moskva was capable of carrying nuclear weapons. On the evening of April 13th, a Ukrainian anti-ship Neptune missile hit the pride of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, Moskva, sinking it. Now experts and analysts have warned Moskva could have been carrying two nuclear warheads designed to be fitted to its P-1000 carrier killer missiles. Ukraine has called for an urgent probe into the incident. The U.S. says it cannot take the Russian nuke threat lightly. We obviously take uh, any potential nuclear threat very, very seriously. And we noted uh, early on in the conflict when Mr. Putin decided to, uh, to, to, to uh, offer some bellicose rhetoric with respect to nuclear capabilities that uh, we noted at the time that we took that seriously um, and that uh, we continue to monitor it as best we can. Um, so. With respect to any recent rhetoric, uh, we're obviously watching that very closely too. Moscow had warned NATO that if Sweden and Finland joined the group, it would deploy nuclear weapons and hypersonic missiles in a Russian enclave on the Baltic Sea. Moscow possesses approximately 6,000 nuclear warheads as of 2022. The largest stockpile of nuclear weapons in the world. Observers say it's highly unlikely Moscow could actually start a nuclear war. Given Putin's volatility, his threats can't be taken lightly either. Bureau report, India today. Russia has consistently said that nuclear weapon use is unthinkable and there are no winners in a nuclear war, but has said it will not rule out the use of nuclear weapons in defense. And that means if it is struck first and if its existence comes under threat. What are those red lines? Well, 
precisely that question has been war-gamed and simulated by a group of scientists at Princeton University, not now, but well before the actual war. And that picture has become terrifyingly familiar with everything that we're seeing. Aggravated by the global escalation against his invasion of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has amplified the nuclear threat. Placing the world's biggest nuclear weapons arsenal on operational alert and putting the world on notice. But what would happen if Putin decided to push the nuclear button? What would happen to the world? It's an unthinkable question. But three years before the invasion, a group of scientists at Princeton University's program on science and global security created a data-centered simulation with actual targets, actual warheads and actual plans. It begins very much with what we're seeing already, a battle between Russia and a Ukraine that's armed and trained by NATO and the US. What you're about to see is what would happen if Putin is pushed to the limit. First, Putin fires a tactical nuclear warhead as a warning shot to jolt NATO into the fact that he means nuclear business. Rattled by the crossing of that nuclear threshold, NATO immediately fires back a nuclear tactical missile to destroy the Russian launch site. This triggers a big tactical nuclear war in Europe. Russia dramatically escalates by launching 300 nuclear warheads via aircraft and short-range ballistic missile to hit NATO bases and military units around Europe. NATO returns fire, firing back with 180 nuclear warheads at Russian targets. The crossfire and impact of the nuclear attack engulfs all of Europe, practically destroying the continent, with an initial casualty figure of 2.6 million in just three hours. With Europe destroyed, the United States steps in, launching as many as 600 intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads from land and sea at Russia. With the US nuclear missiles still in the air, Russia launches all available intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads at the United States, before its own launch sites are destroyed. This phase will create as many as 3.4 million casualties. And in the final phase, with the aim of inhibiting each other's recovery, Russia and NATO target each other's most populous cities and economic centers with 5 to 10 nuclear warheads each, depending on their population. This phase could cause as many as 85.3 million casualties. So in less than five hours, with the use of over 2,500 nuclear weapons, this nuclear war could cause 34.1 million fatalities and injure over 57.4 million. And that's just in the immediate part of the war. It is clear that nuclear conflict will destroy the world. And this simulation, juxtaposed with what's happening between Russia and NATO, reminds the world how close the end could be. Bureau Report, India Today. There are many different ways of delivering nuclear weapons by the, the world's nuclear powers. There are air-launched weapons, there are land-launched weapons, and there are sea-launched weapons, well, actually under the sea. Nuclear ballistic missile submarines happen to be some of the most protected nuclear delivery platforms. These are platforms that roam the world's oceans, never coming to the surface for long periods of time, and with crews that simply sit and wait of that terrifying order from their home country. What's life like inside such a nuclear submarine? We try and put it together in this report. The winch. Soup, he's coming around. One of the most fertile cinema themes from the Cold War. The dark, lurking submarine cat and mouse between the United States and Russia. Two superpowers 
armed with history's most devastating weapons inside lurking submarines, locked in a terrifying embrace. Two nations that spent decades with their fingers on the nuclear trigger. As countless submarine captains spent years in the inky depths of the world's oceans, wondering when their orders would come to unleash apocalypse above the waves. The cinematic appeal is plain to see. But have you ever wondered what life is like inside a nuclear submarine? Nuclear submarines roam the world's oceans on what are called strategic deterrent patrols. Floating tubes of metal designed to stay submerged for months together in order to completely conceal their position. Tasked literally with lurking out of sight and sense, simply waiting for orders to do their devastating singular simple task to unleash their primary payload, long-range weapons of mass destruction. The American nuclear submarine USS Pennsylvania holds the record for the longest submerged patrol by a ballistic missile submarine at 140 days. So what's life like on board? For starters, remember submarines have no windows. So nuclear submariners have to be prepared for no sun, no outside communication or worldly distractions, literally for months together. So no cell phones, nothing that transmits or makes an unauthorized sound. In such a controlled and confined existence, you can imagine how much submariners look forward to their meals. Nuclear submarines have special culinary specialists capable of churning out three delicious meals a day, every single day, for over a hundred crew. With the challenge to keep things fresh and exciting, food is sometimes the only real morale booster on board. Modern nuclear submarines like the US Ohio class and Russian Bore class have made comforts a priority for sailors, knowing that everything else on board is going to be a struggle and a fight for their mental peace. Aside from the usual operational readiness duties that take place, life on board submarines is an endless cycle of routine. While there's no shortage of company on board a nuclear submarine, the deadening sameness of each passing day can mean depression, feelings of separation and other health issues. But as any nuclear ballistic missile submariner will tell you, a day without excitement is simply another day of existence for the world.